This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. We're now going to go through and look at the elements of the financial statements and look at the recognition criteria. Because if we know the elements of the financial statements and their definitions, then we then need to make sure that even though this transaction has met those elements, can we actually then record it within the financial statements? Can we recognize it within that statement of financial position? So a lot of this you will remember from the days of financial accounting. So it is a bit of revision. But as I said before, as we've mentioned in the previous videos, when we're looking at the framework within financial reporting, it's much more about the application. And it's not the knowledge, it's the application of that knowledge. So you have the knowledge from financial accounting. We now need to apply it to transactions and standards within financial reporting. So those elements that you have on, on the left hand side that uh, are looking at what's potentially going to be recorded within the statement of financial position. So remember when you look and get an asset, the definition of an asset is a resource that is controlled as a result of a past event that gives you an inflow of economic benefit. And, and the key word that you've got there is control. When we begin to look at leases standard, when we begin to look at the revenue standards, so these new standards that we have with regards uh, to, to regular transactions that take place in a business, the new rules come back to who has control because whoever has control of the asset uh, will recognize the asset. And uh, from a revenue perspective, if we're looking to sell the goods and we have transfer control, then we can begin to recognize the revenue because we no longer have the asset, it's been sold. Uh, when we come to leases, again, if you control that asset, you're then beginning to look at recording that asset uh, on your statement of financial position, even though you don't legally own it, but you do control it. Okay, so there's application here in terms of leases, revenue, and, and any other accounting standard to deal with assets, inventory, property, plant, and equipment, intangibles. Uh, intangibles is a really key one. Uh, because we need to make sure there that yes, it might meet the definition of an asset, but we might not be able to recognize it. Okay. Uh, your liabilities. The key one there is looking at your present obligation. So if you have an obligation at the reporting date, you will recognize a liability. So we see this commonly within provisions when you're accounting for uncertainty. Uh, when we're accounting for uncertainty, we're not sure whether there is an obligation. So IS 37 gives us rules about whether there is a legal or a constructive obligation. Again, you've touched upon that briefly within financial accounting. Uh, if there is the obligation, then it meets the definition of a liability. But can we then recognize it? We then need to look at measurements and whether those outflows are probable, possible or remote. Okay, so it comes back to this definition here of a liability. Present obligation as a result of a past event that gives you an outflow of economic benefit. There will be some transfer of cash or some other asset at some point in future. Uh, equity is effectively just a residual amount, isn't it? Uh, in terms of the assets, less the liabilities. So here, I think it's lacking a little bit in, in definition. That's my personal perspective. Other people will disagree. And I think equity should really focus upon ownership, shouldn't it? Okay, because that's what equity is. It's focusing upon what the current equity shareholders own within the business, isn't it? Uh, but I suppose technically they own the assets, less the liabilities. Uh, and that's where we need to think about when we're thinking about financial instruments. Do we have a liability or do we have equity? Uh, when we're looking to, to raise finance. So you're debiting your bank because money's coming in. Will we credit the liability or will we credit equity, share capital, share premium or some other equity balance? And, and it all comes down to the framework definitions. If there's an obligation, so you have to pay cash at some point in the future, then you have a liability. If there's no obligation to pay cash, then you're giving the investor a share within the assets and the liabilities of the, the entity. Uh, but what happens if there's a little bit of an obligation and potentially an issue of shares as well? That's where it gets complicated. Uh, so we could have a compound financial instrument at some point in the future. Sounds like fun, doesn't it? Okay, but 
whenever you have a transaction, just go back and think about these elements of the financial statements. Okay. Uh, you've then got the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income side. So income, uh, you're looking there at being an increase in an asset. Uh, so if you've got there the revaluation of PPE, that's an increase in an asset. So that gain is effectively income, isn't it? Uh, if you have the reduction in a liability, so you have a liability that's measured within your financial statements at fair value. Uh, if that liability reduces, that's a good thing, isn't it? So we are debiting the liability. The other side is a credit, isn't it? So therefore, that credit is a gain. It's beneficial to, to have a lower amount of an obligation, isn't it? Uh, the expense that you have, the expense is a reduction in asset or an increase in your liability. Uh, so if you have an increase in your provision, you're increasing the provision by crediting the provision. The other side is there as an expense, isn't it? Okay, uh, there we go. So, you know, that brings you into the, the income, the expense definitions and begins to bring you into the world of profit or loss and OCI, doesn't it? You just need to go through there and be careful then that you've met the definitions of the elements. What about the recognition criteria? Well, here, those future economic benefits attached to the assets, the inflows, uh, attached to the liability, the outflows are probable. So more likely than not that they will come or flow to out of the business. And then also you need to be able to measure those benefits reliably because if you can't measure a number reliably then you cannot go through there and record it within the financial statements it's not useful is it it's not giving you faithful information uh if it's not reliably measured is it okay uh, so therefore we need to ensure that we can attach a value to it uh common example we'll see it when we get to the intangibles chapter okay you need to make sure there that you've met the definition of the asset and that you can actually recognize it. If you can't measure it reliably, so if you're looking to recognize an internally generated brand, you can't reliably measure the value of that brand and what you're spending on the brand from the rest of developing the rest of the business. Okay, uh, so therefore you just need to be a little bit careful because yes, it might meet the definition of an asset, but you cannot recognize it, okay? Uh, similarly, with regard to your liabilities under IS 37 and your provisions, yes, you might have a present obligation as a result of a past event, but if there's no probable outflow of economic benefit, maybe it's possible and you can't recognize that provision and you may have to just disclose a contingent liability instead, okay? So, so that's a little bit of the application. It's important you don't just focus on the knowledge, but you think about the application as well.